Your motto is the school that lives in the future. Absolutely. Do you have a campus on the moon? No, we don't have a campus on the moon. What does it mean in the future? It means about having vision, about thinking about business in the future. Management is about today. Leadership is about tomorrow. And I think uh, when you're doing an MBA program, definitely, and I'm going to talk about an MBA program because I'm the Associate Dean for the MBA program, it is about thinking about the future. It's about, of course, dealing with today, but actually thinking about the future. But I'm, I'm really concerned about the present. I'm going to leave here right now in a year and try to get a job. So what is that difference between now and the future? You're not going to get a job if you're only dealing with right now. You're going to, the companies want, um, especially emerging young leaders, they're wanting leaders who do think in the future. I mean, things change so fast. What you're learning today, right, might actually be irrelevant in a number of years. So what we've got to teach you in an MBA program is also competencies, being flexible, being adaptable, thinking about what is going to be different. Uh, values. You've got mm. four values on your website. Sustainability, critical thinking, spirit, innovation. Mm. What does all that mean? It sounds pretty up in the air. Are you, are you asking is critical thinking too much or are you asking about critical thinking? I'm asking about having four values which are all kind of quite abstract. Values usually are quite abstract because they're values. So how right. do you know you're doing them? You don't always know you're doing them but we do hope that uh, through I think interacting with other people in the class, with our faculty, with our staff, we will live those values. And you don't think, you don't get up every day and think, you know what, I'm innovative today, or today I'm full of spirit. You live those values. I was full of spirit last night. <laughs> I'm sure you were. <laughs> um, according to your website, business is the major stakeholder. What's more important, the values that you have or the values that the business sees in you? I think as a person, if you're going to go and work in an organization, I would say choose an organization which has values closest to your own values because otherwise you're not going to get up in the morning and say, yippee, I'm going to go to work. You're going to get up in the morning thinking, oh my Lord, you know, uh, there's something not right. I feel uncomfortable going to that organization. So whatever the values are of the organization, make sure they fit the values that you believe but in. But business as a stakeholder, does that mean that the school has good relationships with local businesses? What, what does it mean that business is a stakeholder? Well, business is a stakeholder because we're educating people to go and work in business. And if we are not educating people who are able to work in business, right, we have a problem. And shouldn't those businesses determine your values? I don't know if the businesses should determine the values, but I do think the businesses can uh, co, co, let's say, co-educate our students. So there should be, um, what would you, how would you say, there should be a lot of, of synergy between business and how we educate at RSM. Can I drink this at RSM? At Unfortunately, you can drink that at RSM, but we will ask you please to refill that water. Do I have to? No, you don't. Um, sustainability. Is it politically correct window dressing? Uh, absolutely not. I think it always starts off as politically correct window dressing, but ultimately it is a value at RSM if you see what we are doing. Uh, not only through the classes, but actually what we're even doing on campus. And I think it's, I would say, one of the strategic initiatives of RSM is to think sustainable. So I will give you an example. Those of us, those of us that fly for, for business for RSM, we will now compensate with green seats. So the you cannot not fly anymore. Unfortunately, we're a global business school. So if we're going to fly, then we compensate. So if you paint a seat green, it's carbon neutral? No, it's not carbon neutral. But what we do is make sure that trees are planted for the carbon that we've used. Uh, are there any other... Not the carbon, use the carbon we're... Burning. Burning, yeah. Are there any other sustainable initiatives, practical sustainable initiatives like the green seats? Absolutely. So all, um, all our... Computers are switched off at night. Um, lights will move on and off as you come in and out the building. Heating. Um, even we try and bring the students involved. We have volunteers. We have student groups, student initiatives. We had sweater day. So one day we uh, lowered all the heating in the organization and we all wore a sweater. And all of these initiatives make noise. I cannot change the way you work and the way you think and the way you do. But by showing your modeling that there is a different way, hopefully you'll start to think about it. 
Sustainability is, is very interesting, mm. but this is an MBA. It's not a degree in environmental rights or, in, in, or environmental or animal rights or something. Why is it so important for an MBA? Because I think we live on a planet which at the moment, um, according to research, there are really climate change there's issues going around sustainability, and I think we've got to think about it as responsible citizens and as people who want to work, live in the future, and also have our children still have a planet that they can uh, live in. Is so I don't think you can say, well, it's not interesting for business, or it's not interesting for anyone, why should I be interested? That would be very short-sighted. Maybe, but isn't money quite sustainable? If I make a lot of money, and I'm very rich, then I can give money to sustainable things and to charities. Depends how you va what you value. Again, what do you value? If you're saying everything is around money, right, then that's important for me. As, as you saw, money wasn't one of the values. We hope that, of course, our students make money, and uh, we hope that our students add value to society, and that when they work, that they will create jobs for other people. It's not all about how much money an individual can make. How much money do you need? Is it a personal question? <laughs> Well, no, I'm just saying, how much money does a person actually need? Well, if, if there's going to be no pension for most people in, 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 in this generation, we're going to need a lot more money than our parents' generation because mm -hmm. there won't be state provision. So we should make as much money as possible, shouldn't we? I would say that that, that argument is, is flawed. I would say that argument is flawed. It's as much money as possible, or is it much money as so I have a pension and I don't have to live off my children? It wouldn't taste very good. <laughs> um, what is the elective companies and ecologies? It is, uh, actually I brought the piece of paper here because I thought you would ask no, me no. about it, and I'm, I don't know every single elective okay. actually off by heart. With pleasure. That's right. Uh, um, it is an elective given by Gail Weitzman, and it actually looks at sustainable business. So at RSM, I would say um, we have some courses which focus only on sustainability, but a lot of our courses have to do with sustainability. So hers will focus only on sustainability, what a company is doing to be sustainable, triple bottom line, how are they looking at uh, the environment. But if you have a look at our marketing course, there will be a section on uh, child obesity or uh, ch children advertising, which is also about sustainability. Sustainability isn't only about green, it's about long-term uh, business. Ecologies is an interesting mm. word, because I, I used to think of my boss like a badger. Mm. So is, is, is ecologies like, a, a, like animal environment? Absolutely not, it's about business environment. And uh, what is wonderful about companies in ecology is that she has the classroom actually um, not here on campus. Um, she goes to a beautiful garden across the road, and that's where they hold classes, in the garden. This is, this is Manhattan on the Mar. Is that right? Manhattan on the Mars, yeah. On Manhattan on the Mars. Mm. Why not go to Manhattan to study? Because I think, uh, and that's another reason why we are even doing uh, Bergplatz, our elective in Bergplatz, because I think a lot of people have not even seen beautiful nature. Um, uh, they come from big cities, they live in big cities, and here you're now going to go to stunning, beautiful nature, and you're going to be talking about what the environment does to where you're sitting. It starts to become pretty personal. If I'm sitting in an office building 64 high and they start talking about what we're doing to flowers and trees, I don't see it, I don't touch it, I don't, I don't smell it, I don't taste it. But if I'm actually sitting there, it's very different. Well, that's interesting because the, the only other highly ranked MBA in Holland is in Tilburg, mm. which is deep in the countryside, beautiful green flowers everywhere. If, if I care about sustainability, wouldn't I go and do my MBA in Tilburg? I have no idea if they focus on sustainability at all. So I, I cannot answer that question. But in terms of living in a natural environment? It's not only living in a natural environment. It's not only this, actually being part of that natural environment, thinking about it. Um, it's, it's, I'm, tr I'm trying to say is um, we, we teach a lot of cases at RSM and in many, many business schools. And I'll say, right, what would you do if X, Y, and Z? And you sit there and you're looking. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. And then I put you into a situation and then it's completely different. I mean, we know 
that we make decisions that we never ex actually execute. I would be extremely skinny if every day I actually went on diet when I said I was going to until those beautiful cakes come along because everyone has birthdays and I eat those cakes. So actually making a decision doesn't mean you execute a decision. What makes you execute a decision? I think when you're actually in the environment, actually smelling, touching, tasting, what is happening to those people that you are affecting. Africa, you, you do send uh, trips to Africa from the school. Is Africa good public relations? I don't know. No, I don't think it has anything to do with public relations. Well, it's at a all. very poor. Con uh, there are poor countries there. People need help. Is there mm. anything that you do will look good in Africa? I don't think that was even on anyone's mind when we decided to go to Africa. Again, you know, an MBA is a little bit of an elitist program. You pay a lot to come into an MBA. A lot of people haven't even seen poverty, haven't dealt with micro businesses at all. Um, they've seen it on TV, but now by taking them out there and working with micro businesses, helping micro businesses, also understanding how these people are surviving, what they think, what they feel, it gives a different perspective. What, it, what do you do with micro businesses? So what we do is we will send students out, let's say, to South Africa, and we will ask the school that we have uh, joined forces with on this project to identify a number of micro businesses. Is that an African school? Yeah, it's a school in South Africa. And then we will um, send our students out to these micro businesses. They have to work with the people for a day. And it's not about telling the people they're working with how to do their business better. It's actually that our students learn from them. So what benefit do they bring to the African businesses? I don't know if they bring, they, I think they bring exposure to what is happening and the ultimate thing, what, what I think is the, the real gain here is when they go into business ultimately and you know with globalization, supply chain, they're going to be dealing usually with business in Africa, business in India, business in uh, China. They're going to be thinking about the people that they are affecting, the people that they are employing. Can we really learn very much about business from poor people? Of course we can learn about business. But they're not very good at it. Why do you say they're not very good at it? Because they don't have any money. Yeah, so you have to, so it, but they are innovative. They are creative. They have to think about where they're going to get their next meal from. You don't have to think about it, right? So what are you saying? I'm saying that I'm, I've come to do a business education. I'm learning from great professors and, and experts, and clearly they have things to yeah. teach me. And going to Africa to micro businesses, mm. I don't know, a guy with a banana shop or something, yeah. he, does he have the same richness to teach me as I can learn from my professor here? I think here? he has a lot of richness because as business, you're touching everyone's lives. Are we only going to touch people who are, are going to deal with us uh, directly, who are going to help us make money? As businesses, right, what is business there for? Is it to make you rich or to make society rich? Well, you have a course called Business and Society. It's mm -hmm. an elective. Mm -hmm. Isn't business a kind of society? Isn't the world of rich people a real society also? I wouldn't look at it like that, no. I think this is one planet. And I think that we have... Um, business has a um, responsibility not only to be making money for its, its uh, shareholders, but also... Um, I think business has to really impact society in a positive way. And in terms of defining positive, where does that come from? It's easy to say positive. Positive is actually uh, creating jobs, definitely. Um, uh, educating, I think business also has a part in educating young people and also helping, let's say, um, these micro businesses uh, get off the ground, absolutely. And I must say that uh, coming to, going to South Africa, there's a lot of innovation at the bottom of the pyramid. We can learn a lot uh, from, from these people. So uh, there's this idea of education is, is, is very interesting. Yeah. Can, can we leave education to business schools? They're, they're businesses. They're self-interested organizations that promote themselves. You mean business schools are actually businesses? Yes. Is that what you're saying? I think business schools are educators as well as having to, to be self-sustained, right? Um, governments are not paying for education like they used to, so business schools have to at least be self-funding.
So I think in that sense, yeah, they are a business, but they are also educators. We still have to educate. That should be our primary function. And when we educate, it's, it's about what? What does, that, what does educate mean different to teach people to succeed in business? Is, is there a difference between those things? Teach people to succeed? I think there is, is a, a, a difference, and I don't think one excludes the other at all. Right, so as I said to you, you can teach people about business today, the trends, what is happening. Uh, you can give them frameworks, these type of things, but you've also got to teach them how to think. Right, you've also got to teach them about competencies, these type of things as well. You've got to teach them about the impact that they are having, um, the impact that they have on other people, right? You've got to teach them to be self-aware. You've got to teach them how you view the world. Doesn't mean that if you go to China or India or South Africa, people view the same world through the same eyes as you do. And how can you still create a winning team, a winning organization, one world with all of us looking through lenses differently. Is the Princess Irina trip something to do with this? this Absolutely. The Princess Irina trip um, um, is about mindfulness and storytelling. We live in a, a world today which is so frenetic. I mean, you're answering emails, you're probably thinking, talking to me, and you're probably thinking, oh my God, I've got five emails to do, and I forgot to do this, I forgot to do that. Oh, crap, yeah. <laughs> now, all of us, that's how we are. We get up in the morning, we open, the first thing we do is we look on our iPhones, or we uh, open our email, and with Princess Irena, what we're doing is we're taking them to her nature reserve, which is stunningly, stunningly beautiful in the middle of the Karoo. There is no Wi-Fi. I think there's electricity two hours a day. You're going to eat vegetarian food and you're going to be, I know. This sounds awful, yeah. <laughs> for some it does. But what you're doing is, is starting taking you away and putting you in an environment where you can reflect. Who do you want to be? If I actually asked you, who do you want to be? You'd have to all of a sudden quieten down and start actually thinking, oh, who do I want to be? Do you want to be the person sitting across from me? Who do you want to be in three years' time? What impact do you want to have? And how are you going to do that? Well, uh, yeah, I want to be this and this. Uh, let me answer the email. Let me get on the phone. You need to quieten down. You need to think about it. And here in this stunning, beautiful environment, what impact can you have? It sounds, you know, it sounds very meditative. It sounds enlightening. Can I do that after my MBA? I'm sure you could find these courses after your MBA, but you can find a finance course after your MBA, and you can find a strategy course and an OB course after your MBA. So your MBA is not only about courses. No, but it's, I, I'm paying a lot of money, and I'm investing one very intensive year. So to, to vanish off to Africa to hug trees for a few days is uh, quite well, a luxury. Not, you're not hugging trees. You're actually reflecting, and that is a luxury. And that's a luxury now that you probably won't get once you start working. What about the Kilimanjaro project? Is that a sexist project just for women? <laughs> it is a sexist project just for women, absolutely. I have to agree with you. It is a project, um, uh, some of the research has indicated that women don't take risk as men take risk. And if they do take risk, they usually choose men and not women to uh, be their teammates. And the Kilimanjaro project is to show women that they can take risk and they can take risk with other women. And it gives them the opportunity to work with a group of very strong women. Going up a mountain, climbing, carrying stuff, does it make them into real men? Is that the it's idea? It's not about making them into men. It's making them realize they can be anything they want to be, right? And there doesn't have to be a glass ceiling in front of them and it doesn't have to be a mountain in their way. Women aren't yet as successful as men in no. business. Yeah. So why should they be so successful in business school? What do you mean, why should they be well, so? Well, it's, it's unrealistic to have women so successful at school when there aren't the jobs or the recognition in the so, market. So how do you make them be recognized in the market? Not successful at business school? The you, just, you just wouldn't, you wouldn't train them in the first place. Oh, so we wouldn't train them in the first place, okay. Well. First of all, women are 50 percent, or actually I think it's 51 percent, literally, of the population. And I think it would be very small-minded to say, oh, well, look, they haven't got to the top yet, and uh, let's not train them at all. It's a waste of time. I think women are innovative, creative, and uh, very intelligent, just as intelligent as men. And I think that we've got to nurture all of those um, competencies and show them that they can be at the top, absolutely. However, on the course, there are only 33% women. Yes. Um, is that enough? 
We would like to, uh, I think not only us, but all business schools would like to see that be 50-50, but it is, a, a, it is difficult. And how many of the teaching staff are female? Very few. And again, does, does that, is there a friction? There I, th between? I don't know if there's a friction, but I think, uh, again, this is one of the other issues we know, for instance, there's only two and a half or three percent uh, women who are presidents of companies and CEOs in, let's say, the 27 EU states. Uh, we know in business schools there's probably 20 percent, in business schools, 20 percent female professors. We know that a lot of the cases that we use in business schools are very male-focused. But I think until we make noise, until we raise some of these issues, it's not going to change. So yes, when women sit in front of the class and all they're seeing is men in front of them, you know, they're also maybe not consciously, but definitely subconsciously or uh, thinking, right, intellect comes from male leadership is a male issue again. So I think by the Kilimanjaro project and by us making, uh, you know, raising awareness around this issue at RSM, I think uh, women are starting to view, women in the program themselves are starting to view leadership in a different way. I'll give you an example. Um, at the beginning of the year, we bring all the women together from all the classes. And this was before uh, the women had to vote for whether they wanted to stand or, or no nominate themselves or each other for standing for student association presidency. And I asked the class, I said, are any of you going to stand for any of, uh, you know, president, vice president? Oh, no, no, you know, why should we? I said, why shouldn't you? And uh, this year we have a president and a vice president that are female. And so they're doing a great job, by the way. So, I mean, there, there are some losing battles. I mean, Such to, as? To, to, to have women recognized in business uh, as they are in numbers, so they would be in business, well, is, a, is a losing battle, isn't it's it? Not, it's not a losing battle. We have to understand what are the uh, impediments that are stopping them going forward. Is it, is it um, just because they don't want to go to the top? Are, are, are there infrastructure issues which are stopping them go uh, to the top? How does society view it? I mean, if you have a look at media, if you have a look at politics, if you have a look at religion, it is very male dominated. So every message women are getting basically is not messages about you can be at the top. So you have to look at exactly also in organizations, what's actually happening in organizations? Why are women not going to the top? MBAs can be seen as a commodity. You're triple accredited, but that just means that you're uh, accountable to three boards. What's really different from one MBA to the next? Again, I think it's more about values. You know, at every single MBA, and if you're accredited by certain institutions, you're going to have to follow certain uh, guidelines. You're going to have to do a certain amount of hours, classroom hours, uh, certain courses, types of exams, etc. Um, I think fit and is extremely important is do you fit with the values of this school? Um, it's more important than actually trying to just get an extra student onto your seat because you don't want an unhappy student in your class for a year. That can be, that can be quite a negative experience for the student and for the rest of the students. So I think a fit is very, very important. So for instance, at RSM, we do focus on sustainability. There's a lot about personal leadership, right? The impact you have on others, working with diverse teams, uh, working with diversity, thinking through different lenses. Um, so when students come in, for instance, at the RSM at the beginning, and we ask them to solve a problem, they usually say, oh, I know exactly how to solve this problem, and they have cut and paste and an idea of how to solve the problem. If we ask them at, after their year, how do you solve a problem, all of a sudden they realize that problem could probably solve, be solved in, in, multiple, in multiple ways, depending on how you look at the problem. And then I think we've done our job well. Uh, so it just depends what you want out of an MBA, and of course if you feel comfortable. So I mean, if you're going to a school in the U.S., quite often some of the big schools are 900 students, 1,000 students. Here you'll be 120 students, you know, so everyone will know you here. If you're with one of 900, not everyone is going to know you. Do you want a two-year program, a one-year program? Do you want to go on exchange, not exchange? You know, what type of courses are you looking at outside the normal courses? Who do you reject? I think it's about fit. So first of all, you have a certain norm, right? So you have to have a certain background, uh, education background, you have to do a GMAT, all of these certain things. Then you hit that criteria, and then you get started, then the interview process starts. So people will read your essays, they will interview you, and then they will say, 
um, this is a good candidate or it's not a good candidate. If you're a good candidate, you go to the next, uh, the next level. So usually it's, it's more about fit than anything else. So I, I love Rotterdam. I'm sold on the idea of studying in Holland. And I'm not sure, not because of skepticism, but I'm just not sure I know enough about sustainability. Is this the right course for me? Am I going to have to study sustainability? No, we would, we would be talking to you. So you'd be interviewing you. And as I said, values are very important. So we would suggest speak to alumni, uh, speak to people in the class at the moment. Come into class, have a look. Join a, a session and see what it's like. Have lunch with students so that you get a feel of am I going to wake up and say, yes, I'm happy that I went to RSM and did an MBA there, or I'm going to get up every morning thinking, oh, I should have gone to X school or Y school. Sorry, your glass. Um, so are there any other uh, things I should think about in terms of am I the right fit? How do, I, how do I assess myself that I would fit in? Well, first of all, there's a lot uh, written on, on websites, right? So you have to have a GMAT of 600 and something. You have to write essays. You have to have a certain background. Um, we would like you to have an international outlook, for instance, because you're going to deal a lot with diversity in this classroom. And we would say start talking to people. People who are deciding on an MBA usually take about two years before they make their final decision, which is very good because it's expensive, an MBA. So it's something that you should think about and reflect about and not just wake up one morning and say, I'm going to do an MBA, I'm going to go to three schools and I'm going to choose tomorrow. And you will be also asked about where do you want to go in the future? What type of job are you looking for? What country would you like to uh, live in? We want to see, uh, are you being realistic or not realistic? Not that we want to shatter people's dreams, right? But um, usually if you're going to do an MBA, it's about jobs. You know, it's about your career. It's about the future. So we want to see, you know, what type of candidate are you? Can we help you actually achieve your dreams? Is there a question that I didn't ask you that you would like me to ask you? You didn't ask about education. Well, I asked if business schools should educate and if they, if they have a vested interest in educating in, in the so right way. So what do you think business schools actually do? Uh, provide a commodity to businesses. That's very cynical, you know, that, that's a cynical outlook. But I can understand why some people actually think about it like that. But I still really honestly believe that RSM is about education. Um, we're very fortunate here that we can um, adapt pretty quickly also the curriculum, like putting in kind of these innovative uh, courses um, like Kilimanjaro or like Bergplatz or like companies of ecology. So you still do the normal mainstream. I mean, you still have to know finance. You still have to know marketing. You still have to know all of these things. But you're getting a lot more, a much richer experience, I think. So for me, RSM still is a lot about education. And we don't see the MBA as a commodity, no. But what, so what does it really mean that it's about education? I go on this trip to Africa. I'm a guy, so I don't get to go to Kilimanjaro. How do I know that I'm more educated than I would have been somewhere else? You will never know, of course. Or how would you know if you're not educated, if you haven't been educated? So for you, it's about wanting something in the future. RSM lives in the future. So you're coming here because you're saying, if I take these courses and I uh, uh, interact with this diverse group of people and I uh, do personal leadership and I get to know myself more and my blind spots and I, I start to become more aware, right, I am going to be a different person. So in actual fact, it's a transformational journey, an MBA. It's not only education. It's making you become more aware of who you are, your strengths, your weaknesses, how can you be something you can't see or how can you know something that you don't know exists unless people tell it and show it to you? That's what education is all about. It sounds and making you curious. Right? In one year, we can't teach you everything. Absolutely not. And even in 40 hours or 80 hours of finance, we cannot teach you everything. The issue is, can I stand in front of you and inspire you to say, you know what? I would like to learn a lot more about that particular subject. Or, gee whiz, you know, I should be actually thinking a lot more about sustainability than I am. It sounds that there's a vision that your graduates go out and change the world. Um, is no, that, is I don't, that right? No, I don't think our graduates go out and change the world. I think business schools are not there to go. I mean, of course, if you're innovative and you can change the world for something positive, but it's about being more reflective. 
I think uh, hopefully our students go out having learnt a lot more, understanding about multiple perspectives, understanding that they actually know less than they thought they knew. And I'm just, what I'm trying to understand is, is, is an MBA to help me fit in to a world where people already succeed or to create something different? No, I think an MBA is usually uh, for people who have done law degrees, maybe even econometrics, who are going into management positions. Um, they might come from health, they might come from different, uh, different walks of life. And understanding also the terminology, how do I talk to people in finance? How do I talk to people in operations? How do I talk to people in China? You know, so it's actually also how do I interact with everyone? As I said, in one year, we cannot teach you everything. Um, so it's giving you the tools and the confidence and the, com yeah, I can do it. You know, I can be understood. I can ask the right questions. So when will I know that I've got value for my investment after the MBA? When will you know? I think you will know when you start adding value. I think that's when, when we'll know. It's not all about money. I think you will say, you know what, I'm, I'm adding value now. I'm doing something I wanted to do and I'm making a difference in, in perhaps people's lives around me. Uh, we're in Rotterdam. Will I meet any Dutch people on this course? I think in the full-time uh, course, you're, you're not going to meet that many Dutch people. I think we have about 7%, sometimes 10% Dutch people in the course. Um, in our Ember class, it will be around 50% Dutch people. Um, it's like a little United Nations here at RSM. So you will have a few people from this country, a few people from that country. And I think that's what gives the spirit and the buzz, if you talk, talk about spirit, um, at RSM. Because, you know, if you're sitting with all people who are like you, we like football, we like beer, you know, um, we like to go out at night, um, you're going to be very comfortable. Here at RSM, you've got 40 different nationalities and everyone has a different view to you. So how do you actually create that winning team? And there is a lot of buzz at RSM and they actually do create a winning team. If I have a look at 110 students went down to uh, the NBA Olympics, we've got sustainability clubs, the most amazing things. The NBA Olympics? Yes, we have uh, an NBA Olympics which is hosted by Hache Say in uh, just outside uh, Paris and a number of schools go there and then they do sports and it's a kind of a, a mini Olympics and they call it an NBA you Olympics. You throw a javelin with calculus written on the side? I, I doubt that. I think students have a lot of fun and get to know each other as well and students from other schools. So you know there's a, a, a I think at RSM, anyway, with kind of having 150 students and 40 different nationalities, it does create a lot of buzz, a lot of energy. There's a lot of activity going on, and students are constantly challenging one another and the faculty as well, which I think is great.